with the next person or with your son or your daughter. God, you see, before you were born, this is one interesting thing I realized about God and, and creation. You see, if you look at your phone, most of us have, I mean, Apple phones and all these wonderful devices. But the interesting thing about all these things is that with every single year, there is a new version of your phone. You might think you have, that is one thing about tech. If you follow tech, your money will finish. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every single year, they come up with something new. So you buy this and they'll go like the next version can do what this one cannot do. And my question is, if you knew this, why didn't you put it in the, in the other, in the, in the, I mean, in that model? Hallelujah. But basically, what it means is that, you see, whatever man does, it has to be upgraded. It has to be updated. But there's an interesting thing if you look at the creation of God. There is nothing God has created till this day, even till tomorrow, that needs to be updated. Man had, was made perfect in creation. Now, if you look at man, it's so, it's, it's so amazing that, you know, every single drug that has been created now, every single drug that will be created in the future, there are receptors in, body, in the body of man for that medication. Think about that. That is how perfect God is. That what he has created, there, is, there has never been a time that God will go like, um, Angel Gabriel, I think we should, we should have, I should have put the ear here and maybe the eye, I should have put one on the, on, the, on the belly. But what he did was perfect from the very onset. Hallelujah. And Bible says that as he is, so are we in this world. So if we profess or we confess to be children of God, there is a code that, or there's a blueprint that we have to align or order ourselves with or, or order our lives by. I beg your pardon. We have to order our lives by what God's word says. So you might be feeling sick in your body. But what is God's word saying? God's word is saying that you are healed. And God is saying that let the weak say I am strong. So regardless of what you feel in your body, you are speaking God's word. And as you speak it, you shall see it. Genesis chapter 1, Bible says that in the beginning God created, verse 1, in the beginning God created heaven and earth, verse 2, and verse 3 says that, and the word, the word was, that was without form, and it was void, and the spirit of God brood or brooded over the waters. Hallelujah. And then the verse 3, if you read down in verse 6, Bible says that God said, verse 9, God said, and he saw. Verse 6, God said, and he saw. Verse 11, God said, and he saw. Verse 14, God said, and he saw. Verse 21, God said, and he saw. 26, God said, and he saw. So anytime he said it, he saw it. So ask yourself, what do you want to see in your life? If anything is not aligned to God's word, it is an error in your life that needs to be rectified. Hallelujah. If anything in your life does not align to scripture, it does not align to God's word, it is an error that needs to be rectified. Amen. But the question is, what if, you see, if we are sons of God, we need, it means that we have the spirit of God. But the question is, what are we saying that is misaligned or is not aligned to what God is saying concerning our lives? Amen. Many of us, we have allowed the world to dictate to us how we, we need to live. And you sometimes realize that sometimes we bring our own philosophy from the world and we want to try to fit it into our lives. And it will surprise you, there are some things that we, we, we have said we believe is in the Bible. We say that God helps those who help themselves. Somebody actually thinks it's in the, it's in the Bible. It's not a bad thing. What I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of things that sometimes out of our own experiences, we try to, we, we feel they become part of us and we try to major on those things and we allow our lives to be governed by those things. Amen. But understand that when God says something, he means it. You know, in the book of John chapter 11, we, 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 we read the interesting story about Lazarus and Jesus and Mary and Martha. Bible says that Lazarus was sick and Jesus wasn't there in Bethany. And then Jesus told the disciples that this sickness 
It's not unto death. And then, I mean, he went about doing what he was doing. And Bible said that Lazarus was sick and Lazarus died. And after Lazarus died, what was Jesus' words? This sickness is not unto death. The Bible says that when Jesus Christ came before the tomb of Lazarus, what did he do? He first started by saying, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. What, what did God hear? God heard what the prayer Jesus said or the words Jesus spoke, that this sickness is not unto death. So what happens is that if your words align with scripture, even in the deadness of situation, God can infuse life. Hallelujah. And if God is able to raise a man who was dead for four days, your situation is not beyond him. But the question is, what is your confession? Amen. Is your life being governed by the spirit of God and, or, the, or the word of God? Or your life is being governed by things you have experienced? You know, in the book of Numbers chapter 13, the Bible says that Moses sent 12 men. Numbers chapter 13. And they went to spy the land of Canaan. And this was the promised land that God had, I mean, promised the children of Israel. And he told them that I'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey. A land that you, with vineyards that you have not planted. And he, the interesting thing was that out of the 12 people, and you see, the, the criteria to select the 12 people who went there was that every person represented a tribe. And each one that was selected was somebody that they entrusted at least knew well enough or at least knew God enough to be able to embark on this, I mean, this expedition or this trip. And Bible said that out of the 10 people that were sent, out of the 12 people that were sent, I beg your pardon, it was only two people that had a positive confession. The 10 kept on saying, if you read the verse of, uh, in the uh, verse 33 of Numbers chapter 13, Bible says that they came back and said that we saw giants. And look at what they said. That we ourselves were like grasshoppers, grasshoppers in our own sight. And so were we in their sight. So it means that if you don't confess the word of God, you don't align your, your, yourself to God's word, the world will dictate to you. Hallelujah. The world is dictating to the church in a lot of spheres and a lot of circles. Initially, we could freely read the word of God in schools. But now they have taken the Bible out of schools. And they are bringing, I mean, demonic theology. As to how somebody should view himself. Amen. And all these things, some of us, we have gladly embraced it. In a world of inclusivity, that is not, that is not bad. But the issue is that you should align your, word, your life with the word of God. And not with what the world is saying. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that the words, if you read what Jesus said in the book of John chapter 6, verse number 63. Jesus said that the spirit giveth life, the flesh profiteth nothing. And the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So God's word is spirit and God's word is life. John chapter 6, verse 63. So therefore, whatever, whatever you align your life with, which is not God's word, is not life. Amen. Many a time as believers, we, are, we believe God for a lot of things. But sometimes our actions are opposed to our beliefs. You see, in the book of Acts, the Bible says that Herod captured James, the apostle. And after he captured James, the Bible said that he killed James. And he saw that it pleased the Jews. So what did he go ahead to do? The Bible said that he went ahead and captured Peter also. But then, the Bible says that intercession was made by the church on behalf of Peter. So Peter was in prison and intercession was going on for him. But guess what? When an angel appeared and liberated Peter took off the shackles of his feet and brought Peter right into the midst of the Christians, of the people that were praying. The Bible said that they were there praying and um, a girl called Rhoda went and told them that 
I hear Peter outside. They told her that shut up. Peter is in prison. We are praying. Hallelujah. He said, no. I hear Peter outside. They said, no, no, it has to be his angel. So it meant that even though they were praying, not all of them believed what they were praying for. You know, sometimes we pray, but ask yourself, do you actually believe the words you pray? And understand that prayer is actually repeating God's word back to him. That is why prayer that is answered. You see, it's not all prayer that is answered. The prayer that is answered is the prayer that aligns with God's word. And what is prayer? Prayer basically is repeating God's word to him. Hallelujah. You, when you recite God's word to him, that is why the Bible says that this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. So the reason, you see, the reason why the children of Israel lost it in the wilderness was because they were not reciting God's word and they had lost track of what God's word said. Amen. To say that this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. So the children of Israel, two of them came back with a good report. That was Caleb and Joshua. And because they aligned their lives with God's word, they were the only two that were able to see the promised land. Even Moses, Moses the deliverer, was not able to see the promised land. He only took them to the very edge, but it was the man who had a positive confession, who aligned his life with the word of God, that was able to take the train of Israel to the promised land. And every single one of them that came from Egypt, they all died in the wilderness. Every single one of them. Amen. So when you pray, ask, ask yourself, do you actually believe what you are praying for? Or you are just saying these things, you know, out of religiosity, you see, out just to satisfy your religious conscious, consciousness, or maybe just to this uh, conscience. Hallelujah. Just to satisfy your religious, um, equ- uh, um, I don't know, but just to make, make everything look religious, sometimes we make prayers. You know, so one time when we pray that, you know, you are going through a challenge, for example, and you are praying and believing God that God should come through for you. You are believing God for a miracle. But sometimes in our heart of hearts, we are just praying so that we can just look like we are believers. But truly in our heart of hearts, we don't believe what we are praying for. Some of us don't believe what we are praying for. You see, an interesting story happened in the Bible regarding a man called Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. Bible says that John the Baptist and his wife Elizabeth had been without child for a very long time. Because Elizabeth was barren. And Bible said that one day God sent an angel. And the angel appeared to Zechariah. And guess what Zechariah was doing? Zechariah was the priest in the temple and he was ministering before the Lord. So it meant that Zechariah was in PIWC coming to church every Sunday. In fact, he was coming for first and second service. He would come and clean the chairs. And he was doing all these things religiously. And he was believing God for a child. Now, God has sent an answer to his prayer. And that answer to his prayer came through an angel. I believe that was the angel Gabriel. And he stood before him and said that, you know, your prayer has been answered. You are going to get a son. And this is Zechariah, who is supposed to be a priest and should know better. Standing right in the temple, God's servant or God's angel has appeared to you. And then he begins to doubt and starts asking questions. You know, but my wife is old and myself, I am old and this and that. Start giving excuses. The question is, didn't God know he was old? God knew. But and yes, still God's word still came. But because he was, you see, it wasn't mixed with faith. Paul said, you see, the word should be mixed with faith. So he was praying, but he wasn't believing what he was saying. So the angel took offense and said that, you know, you can doubt man, but I am an, I'm the angel that stands in the Lord's presence. And I am telling you not what somebody has told me. I'm telling you what God is telling you, that you are going to have a son. And you are doubting it. Because of that, you are going to be mute. And the reason why the devil made him mute, sorry, I beg your pardon. The angel made him mute was that 
the angel or God didn't want him to go negating the seed of God's word that had been sown. You see, God's word is a seed. And that seed, when it is planted, is watered by faith and repetitive confession. And that is what is going to deliver to you your miracle. So God had to make him dumb so that he would not destroy what God was trying to do. To understand that by your words, you can be your own prophet of doom. Or you can be your own prophet of bloom. Your life can blossom, B-L-O-O-M, bloom. Or your, your life can be doom, D-O-O-M, by your own words. Hallelujah. As a child of God, Bible says that as he is, so are we. So if God is spirit and the words of God, you see, and if God says it, he sees it, it means that when you also say it, you see it. So as a child of God, stop owning sickness. Stop owning poverty. It goes like, and this is my asthma. You know, my asthma comes during the winter. And when it comes, you know, my asthma. Hallelujah. My asthma. You have, you have bought it. You have signed the lease. And you have made yourself a, the landlord of asthma. Hallelujah. You see, there was one time, this was a, many years ago. I was, um, this was maybe about six years ago, if I'm not mistaken, or five. I was, I think I was traveling from either Maryland to Virginia or Virginia to Maryland or something. And then somewhere along, I mean, the, I, was, I was going by Greyhound. Some of you, I mean, you don't know where we've come from. Hallelujah. I was going by Greyhound. Some of you don't know what Greyhound is. But Greyhound is, is a bus. <laughs> okay. So I was going by Greyhound, and um, one of the, the, the transit points, they actually overbooked the passengers in the, or the number of people who were supposed to get on that bus. So let's say, for example, if there are about 30 seats in the bus, they were, were about 50. So what it meant was that not everybody could get on the bus at that time. So they were trying to give priority to maybe the people who were either um, the, the aged or like the people who were sick and stuff like that. Then here I see this woman by me who kept on saying that they should allow her to get on the bus. Why? Because she's disabled. She kept on screaming, I am disabled. I need to be on this bus because I am disabled. I am disabled. Look at my desk. Look, I'm disabled. I saw this woman walking. Even though, listen, even though she had papers to say or whatever, government, whatever to say she's disabled. You know, working in the health sector, I've seen a lot of interesting things. You see people, people will come with their eyes, two eyes looking at you, and then they are legally blind. I mean, it is something that is there. But I'm trying to say that don't try to own sickness. Because as you keep on confessing it, and so that woman, she kept on saying that I am disabled. I was, in my, head, in my head, I was saying, oh, please, stop saying that. But she kept on repeating it. In my head, when I say don't say it, then she'll say it. So then I knew that if God doesn't come through for her, that, that lady, she's going to be disabled for life. And it's not the case. It is her own words that is giving her what she has said. Hallelujah. So your words are very important. The Bible says that a man's spirit will sustain him in sickness. And how will your spirit sustain you? It is by the words you speak. Jesus said in sickness that this sickness is not unto death. So even if death read his head, the words Jesus spoke will cause Lazarus, who was dead, to come back alive. As a child of God, what, what do you say? You know, sometimes they tell you that, oh, you, you, you are doing well. Go like, oh, no, we, still, we are still struggling. You know, we are still, don't say that. And we think that by saying that we are humble. That is no humility. Hallelujah. That is no humility. And you see, sometimes too, you are, you are going through a challenge. It could be financial. But that is not your position in Christ. Hallelujah. That is not your position in Christ. Bible says that, you know, God is able to do exceeding abundantly. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 18, I believe. It says that God is unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can think of and ask for. Ephesians 3, 18. According to the power that is at work in us. Hallelujah. So God is able to do, but it's, it's, 
the, 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 the rich determining step is the power that is at work in you. And how do you get the power at work in you? It is by activating God's word, let, letting God's word come alive. By allowing God's word to come alive in your life, you activate God's power. And that is what is able to deliver to you what you desire. Amen. You see, God has given us all that we require for life and godliness. But if you fail to allow your words to align with God's word, we read right now in the book of Ephesians concerning the, the, the whole armor of God, that the word of God is the sword. So as you speak God's word, you are, you, are, you are empowering yourself to be able to fight what the enemy throws at you. So if the enemy is throwing sickness at you, you are saying that I am healed. You look at the doctor's report and say that by his stripes I am healed. You look at your bank account and your bank account might look wonderful. But yesterday you say that I am rich. You say the blessings of Abraham are mine. And people will tell you that, you know, let's be real. But the truth of the matter is there's nothing more real than the word of God. Amen. There is nothing more real than the word of God. Every, you see, Bible says that let all men be liars and let God alone be true. So there is nothing more real than the, 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 the word of God. So what you are referring to as reality is actually a mirage. Amen. The life you are seeing that, no, look, put the, you see, sometimes people go like, put the Bible aside. Let's, let's be real. Let's face this. You don't have any money. Just say it. Hallelujah. And once you make that confession, you have set yourself and you have placed yourself on a trajectory to fail. You see, the reason why David was able to defeat Goliath was not because David was a skilled I mean, man in battle. Because just, David was just 17 years old. But by his words, he became a national champion. You see, you are waiting for God to announce you globally. But what is your confession? You know, sometimes <laughs> you come outside and you are all, you go like, hey, PIWC. You know, you are all, but you go into your room and tell your wife, look, let's, let's, let's face facts. See, can any hope? Hallelujah. But you see, you shouldn't just try to portray a life on the outside. When on the inside, your life does not align with what God is saying. And like I told you, the vision can be for an appointed time, but keep, keep at it. No matter how long it takes, keep at it. Keep working God's word. Keep confessing and professing God's word. And you shall see the full manifestation of it in your life. Amen. So David, when David came before Goliath, that was, that's in the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter um, 17, I believe. 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 40 to 56. The story of David and Goliath. 1 Samuel. Now, the Bible says that David initially, he, when he came into contact with his brothers, because he was sent by his father, Jesse, to go and then see how his brothers were faring. The Bible says that when David got there, I mean, he went and then he saw this man called Goliath intimidating the children of Israel. And Bible says that Goliath was there doing that for 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights. Goliath will come and say that get me a man who can fight me. He kept on intimidating the children of Israel and telling them that, get me a man who can fight me. And Bible says that by the words of Goliath, they were intimidated. They were intimidated. Hallelujah. But David decided not to look at what Goliath was saying, but he referred Goliath to what God's word said. He told him that he's an uncircumcised Philistine. And look at the words of David. David said that I will give you, today I'm going to kill you. Today I'm going to cut off your head. And then I'm going to give your flesh to be meat to the bears of the air and to the beast of the field. But when he was saying all these things, there was no sword in his hand. 
But the words he spoke brought the sword in his hand in the appointed time. So if you are believing God to attain something, you might not look like it today. Your circumstance or your situation might not look like it. But as you keep on speaking God's word, God will cause things to align. Bible says that the stars fought in their course for Deborah. Judges chapter 5 verse 20. It meant that creation aligned and fought to ensure that Deborah got victory over Caesarea. Hallelujah. So your words are important. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please, let's be on our feet. It's time. Amen. I want us to pray. Just two prayers and then, I mean, we'll, we'll be done. The first prayer I want us to pray is that God grant me grace to align my words to your word. You are praying that God, may I align my words to your word. That is the word of God. Hallelujah. You are saying that God grace to align my words to your word. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Leka da radoshki breka sianta rabadosa rabede leka doshki lebrie kata raduski pre kazias reka dala bado shanta leka zia dosha libriye kata rakus gilahazis ye telebedosha lirien telebedo sika poros ki pre katize rike derie kashanta rabadosa raka dala bada rabede lebedesha likanto lobodoshki lebrike sianta Gedilieski pre kashanta, Ragoski le brike sante libicosa, La pe kata, Rata balasha, Le bre kata, Le brike sanda, Radoski le prie kata, Libe kata yanda, Lirie kasanda rebeko shanda, Libre kata, Libre kasanda, Lebe shanda, in Jesus' name. I want us to play, I want us to pray finally. We want to pray that God. May the words I speak be only life. Hallelujah. That any death in me, any deadness, any situation that looks like it's, 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 there's no life in it, may your words and the words I speak be full of life. And may it cause a change to every dead situation and every dead state in my life. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. La rakushke le beri sedente li kazuas. Rage shada. Le bekata rakuski vahazis. Le riente le shada rakunda labaha. Le delebede shada ye kazites. Liko shade ria kadusa. Li pre kadaski prianta li vukusha. Le rie kada rete le zadosha. La bre kata ya do shate le beri kate. Likonda libre kaziante le ria koshada. Rago shata. In Jesus precious name. In Jesus name. So Father Lord we bless your name. We thank you O oh God. Thank you for teaching us to align our words and our life by your holy word. We pray that may we live your word. May we speak the right words that will sustain us. May every negativity in our life, O oh God, be realigned, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, to conform to your word. We bring every thought captive and we subject everything to the obedience of Christ. And we pray that let your word take supremacy over every life situation in our lives. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.